All right, it's your man, Georgie Porgy Pudding Pie, back at it again here with the Pagode Hero sent to me by the boys over at Alien Rides. Uh, today, I'm going to do a little maintenance on this bad boy. First of all, I checked my tire pressure. I've been riding it at like 28 pounds of pressure. If you don't have one, get yourself a little tire gauge, guys. It's way more accurate than the uh, pressure gauges on the pumps, and they're like 99 cents. Just get yourself one. Um, so I was riding it at like 28 pounds of pressure yesterday, so we're going to pump it up to about 34, see if it feels any different. I'm sure it will. Um, but also, like I was saying in my last video, the suspension on this thing just felt a little sticky, right? It just didn't feel as smooth as I really think it should. So today, I'm going to pop these side pads off. We're going to uh, see if we can't get into the shock area a little bit here. If it's really easy, if I can figure out how to do it, I might swap the stock shock for my nice DNM shock that I have on my EX20S. I think this should be the same size, 190 millimeter. Um, but if not, anyway, we're gonna lube this bad boy all up, see if we can get it to feel a little bit. I think there also just might be a little, I think these, these fastenings might be a little too tight or something. I'm not positive what it is, but we're gonna get to the bottom of it. We're gonna make this thing smooth as butter today. All right, so the more I look at this, the more pain in the butt it looks like it's going to be to take this apart, honestly. You can see the loudest car of all time. Jesus Christ, dude, use a muffler. Anyway, you can see down in here, like, where this is all attached. Unfortunately, it looks like the frame here juts way out and covers up this top pinion here. And this whole shell here on the side is covering that. So not only would I have to get rid of, I was hoping I could just get rid of the shell piece here, but it looks like I'd also have to take apart part of the actual frame just to get up here. And I think that that's gonna be an absolute pain in the ball. So I don't know if I'm gonna be swapping this. It's not as easy as it is on the EX20S, which is just a simple swap. Um, but what we can do, we can still grease it all up and uh, I'm going to see if loosening these makes a difference. This might be just a little too tight. Alright, now let's see how it moves when we put air into the system. definitely sticky you see how hard that tire was just like having a hard time moving out it is not smooth at all right now which is good that means there's a bunch of stiction which can actually be fixed as opposed to if there was some kind of a uh, flaw here but I think it's just really sticky we can lube this bad boy up or maybe we can loosen up some joints in here and get this uh, actually feeling good so you can see it does move a good amount. It really should be a lot smoother than it was. So hopefully if we loosen up these pivot points and these pivot points and lube it up, hopefully it's a lot smoother. Okay, so that's interesting. So this was incredibly tight on this side. This side wasn't as bad, but watch this. Look at this. Look at this bushing. Look at this one. No movement at all. This one is tight as a anything. Like if I get in there, I can rotate it, but it's really not wanting to go anywhere. So we're going to depressurize the system again. And uh, yeah, okay, that loosened up a lot of pressure on that. So let's see if greasing this all up, that might be our issue right there. Yeah, so even with no air in the system, I got the uh, back nut off here. Let's see. The back screw is off the side. Well, your car is so loud today while I'm trying to film. Um, I got the back screw off here, but I can barely even get this piston to move. It is so stuck in there. I think that's our problem. I don't know if maybe some Loctite leaked out or something. <clears throat> wow. I can't push that out. 
All right, hold on. We're going to have to go to some, some more extreme measures here. Holy crap. Okay, well, that was a pain in the balls to get undone. And look at all the scraping on this pin. You can see where all that friction's coming from right here. It must be rubbing on the inside of this bad boy badly. All right. So, we need to figure out if just lubing this is going to be enough or if this needs to be ever so slightly modified. We're going to uh, just start off by lubing it up. That's the easiest. Uh, oh, it looks like there might be a rebound adjustment on the inside here. But um, let's start by lubing this up and see how it feels because that was in I mean, look at all the crap in here. You can literally see the metal particles from where it's been scraping and rubbing. Okay, well there's our there's our main friction piece right there. That's what's causing it not to be so smooth. So while I have this open, I believe that that is the rebound adjustment. So I just gave it two full rotations open, though, two and a half rotations open or so, um, to see if maybe that'll improve our rebound a little bit. Because it definitely was not uh, bouncing back as fast as I personally like it to. I like it to come back pretty quick. All right, so first things first, let's just take some paper towels here, clean out any of these metal shavings. I can't really get it to focus there for you. But you can kind of see, there's all like those metal shavings inside of these eyelets. These are a little bit dirty. The inside of this is very dirty. Let's just see, maybe it was just metal shavings that were causing a lot of that scratching, a lot of that friction. So we're gonna, gonna take a paper towel, and some of our PB Blaster lube and just clean it all out first and then we'll lube it up real good. Alright, that's much nicer. Let's do the other one. Alright, now we're going to go ahead and lube these pieces up. I want to clean up the inside of this thing first though. Let's uh, blaster. Take some paper towel and run it as deep in there as we can from both sides. And of course, if you watched my EX20S maintenance video, you know that I'm using this PB Blaster dry lube for several different reasons. First of all, this is safe for use on plastic, which is very important. We're going to be spraying this thing all over our machine. It's covered in plastic and rubber, so we don't want it to be corrosive. No chlorinated solvents. So this shouldn't do any damage to the machine. Second of all, it's a dry lube. So it comes out wet, but it does dry into this white. You see all this white crap everywhere now from me spraying it. Um, it dries into that white dry lubricant, which isn't going to collect dust or dirt which is really important for us as we're using these things out outside. If we're using a grease, if we're using some kind of a wet lubricant, it's just going to be a collection zone for dust and particles, and uh, we don't want that. So we want to use some kind of a dry lube. You want to use something that's safe for plastic. So I'm using this PB Blaster dry lube. It seems to work really well for me. All right, well, now we've got the insides and all these pieces all lubed up nicely. So let's go ahead and reassemble this now. Okay, yeah, that went back together about 20 times easier. All these bushings are moving now. It seems a lot more lubricated and loose. That was definitely a huge friction point for us here out of the box. I'm really glad we did that. I think that's gonna make a huge difference. Let's uh, just check on these other friction points that we can hit and lube up anyways though, but I do think that was probably 90% of what was causing this to feel so sticky. Okay, there must be some Loctite on these pieces as well because they feel like they were torqued down by a gorilla or something. I'm just gonna loose them up a little bit. And then uh, we'll lube those areas as well. But we don't want those to be too tight. If they're too tight, we're going to have a lot of stiction. Alright, 
So after lifting it up and down a few times and getting this tire to move, it definitely feels better, but it still doesn't feel great, which leaves us with these side sliders here as being the next thing. So we're gonna go ahead and just rip these pads right off. They're just held on with tape, it looks like. If I'm wrong, sorry, Alien Rides, I'll replace them. Nah, it's just taped on there. And we want to grease up these. Oh, yeah, look at these. These are all crappy, too. So these definitely need some, some greasing going on. That might be part of it, too. Move that up nice and good, good. And we'll do the other side as well. I can actually see that the shaft is also exposed up inside, so I'm going to go ahead and zap that too if I can get to it. Oh yeah, look, if I come down from this side, I can get a good blast on her. Do the same thing to this side. Down. Oh no, my straw! Yeah, but from right here in this little nook, I can get a pretty good shot at it. Alright. So, now we just gotta do this bottom hidden piece. Under, all right, hidden underneath the pad. What the hell is this? This sticker clearly was not supposed to be here. Nice QC, got way. Their warning label. I will say, this is one of the best built Gotways, but like, really? You put the sticker like backwards on the tape so that this pad's only held on by, all right, whatever. All right. Lifting it up and down a few times, it's still definitely not as loose as my EX20S. I think it might be because I couldn't get to the other pin on the top of the suspension, which is what I was talking about, making it really difficult to remove the suspension on this machine is the location of that top pin. Um, but let's try and ride it. Let's see what happens. I'll put some air in it. Let me see if it feels any better. If it doesn't, maybe we'll get more extreme and try to get to that. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But... Let's uh, let's ride it like this and see what happens. I think it's going to be a lot better. Well, I can tell you this much. Just from pumping air in it, it moved so much smoother than it had been. It had been like really jerky and janky when I pumped air into it. That time it just moved smooth as butter. So I'm uh, optimistic we did something right. All right, here we go. We got her lubed up. Yeah, it definitely feels better just bouncing on it. Top off this curb. A little bit better. Let's go find a bump to hit here. Oh yeah, that's way better than it was yesterday. Much more better. So yeah, that definitely made a huge difference. I think if we even got to that top pin, it would make even more of a difference. Uh, apparently this thing just needed some lubrication. It really didn't look like it had been lubricated very well at all out of the box. Um, so that might be something you want to plan on doing if you get one of these Bigode Heroes. Just immediately kind of pop those pieces apart, see how they fit, make sure that it's uh, lubed up nice. Yeah, it's... it's it's really not good for big drops. Coming off the curb, it doesn't feel great, but it handles the little bumps really well. So I don't know if I would take this wheel out for extreme jumping or anything like that, but some uh, soft BMX trails where you're just kind of like hitting all those little bumps, this would be real nice, especially with all that torque. 
All right, anyways, guys, that's a huge improvement to the Pagoda Hero here, just from a little lubrication, a little disassembly work real quick, just to try and get it to uh, feel a little bit smoother, a lot bit smoother. It feels much better now. Anyways, guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, again, a huge shout out to the guys over at Alien Rides, Rob, Kevin, all you guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for sending me this wheel to try out. Uh, hopefully you're not mad that I ripped it apart and sprayed it all down with lube and shit and uh, kind of treated it like it was my own wheel. <laughs> but I'm sure the next person who gets it will appreciate the hard work I did. But anyways, guys, until next time, ride safe.